Okay, obviously he can act like a star. He can direct, he can produce. He's an executive producer. Uh, currently loving him on Big Sky. Anybody watching him on Big Sky? He's on the boys. And oh, let's not forget about the Winchesters. So it's a really exciting time in his career and we're so grateful to have him here with us. I don't know how he fits in time for us, but he loves us and we love him. So give you a warm Vancouver welcome for Mr. Jensen Agno. I have Adam do that uh, when I go into restaurants. Uh, it's uh, it's very helpful. Helps me get the table I want. Um, how are you guys? Yeah. Good. Good. We had a little shindig last night. Uh, got to see a, a, a lot of a lot of familiar faces. Um, we had a little crew get together, the Supernatural family. Uh, we based, it was kind of an impromptu, unofficial rap party. Because we wrapped 15 seasons during COVID, and the, the ending of, of that looked like this. Okay, see that bar. It was nice working with you for 15 years. Um, so we got, to, uh, we got to, to give the proper hugs. And, and conversate, and uh, that was just awesome. But I didn't stay up a little late. Just <laughs> gonna try. This is usually where I would rely on uh, my big tall friend <laughs> to handle most of the dialogue. Because he's a Chad and Kathy from time to time. But I'm gonna have to do it today, so. <laughs> Listen, I can't promise anything, all right? Don't get your hopes up. You did just fine. I'll, in Jersey? Oh yeah, yeah, when you miss Jersey. Uh, yeah, it's, it's about time for me to collect on him. I think I might just skip. No, I'm kidding, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, no, it is a pleasure to be here. He does send his love, speaking of, of Jared. Um, he, wished, he was really bummed when he called me on Friday. He was like, I think that was his first call. And he was like, bro, I got bad news. And I was like, what now? <laughs> like I tested positive for COVID. I'm like, because oh. you know, as you know, we're working on set, we still, per studio protocol, which is really because of union protocol, we get we get tested three times a week. We get a PCR on Monday, we get an antigen on Wednesday, and an antigen on Friday. And even if I'm not working or Jared's not working, we still have to do it and like submit our results into you know this thing. Um, so. Yeah, he, he tested positive, and he was like, ah. and, and I was like, well, how do you feel? Do you feel? He's like, no, I like, couldn't even take the garbage out this morning. Aww. I was like, oh, bro, okay, well, get some sleep, get some rest, um, and uh, I got you. So, um, so yeah, as soon as you are, we'll be fine. Uh, and let's take some questions. I'm only taking questions for me, not for Jared. Um, I'm kidding, I'll take Jared questions, and I'll answer it for him. Uh, yes, right here. You generally have okay, a Jared yeah. question. Let's do that. <laughs> right. um, well, you can definitely answer for Jared because you probably know the answer. Um, my question is related to ACL. Mm -hmm. If you guys could pick your ideal three headliners for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, who would be like your cream of the crop? Oh my gosh. So ACL, for those who don't know, is Austin City Limits Music Festival. It's kind of like Austin's Coachella so to speak, but it happens right in town. It's awesome. It happens two weekends uh, out of the year, usually in early October, if you ever get a chance to go. It's a good, it's a good music festival. Um, <clears throat> that's tough. I'm gonna try to think of bands that I think are currently touring and not be like, oh, yeah. I'd like to see Elvis. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> and even that's a tough one. I, I'm gonna, I gotta go with the Stones. Yeah. Uh, even though I think they may be done touring. Um, here you go, Stones. Elton John. 
Um, and then, I don't know, I saw him once in ACL and it was magical, but I'd, I'd see Metallica again. Like, I literally just see the crowd like this. Everybody's like moshing and getting crazy. Not me, I'm just like this. Just dumbfounded. Like I'm in an art museum staring at art. That's what it was to me. That's what it was to me. Um, yeah, I could probably have 14 other answers for you, but uh, those are those are three off the top of my head. Yeah, name one. For me? Yeah. Uh, Justin Timberlake for me. JT. Yeah, JT. Justin Timberlake. I'd see him. Yeah, he's an amazing performer. Yeah, yeah, no, he's an incredible performer. Um, Bruno Mars. Oh, Just in thinking yeah. about Bruno Mars. thinking in that that genre. Uh, I would want to see him. I mean, yeah. he's pretty entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on. Social Boy. <laughs> hey, Jensen, how's it going? Good, good. So I was curious, with you doing the Winchesters as a late and mostly doing executive producing, are you going to get back into the director's seat and direct any episodes of the Winchesters? Uh, fingers crossed. Um, I, I would be. Uh, right now, if I wasn't busy uh, chasing criminals in Albuquerque, um, uh, but I uh, unfortunately the, the the schedule lined up perfectly to where I'm going to be doing Big Sky for the first the first order of uh, of Winchester's. Uh, that takes us basically to the to the end of uh, end of the year. If and fingers crossed, we get a back order for the Winchester's which a back five, a back nine, whatever that looks like. We're still waiting to hear. Nobody's been ordered on the back just yet. Um, if we get a back, then I plan to do one. So hopefully in, uh, in the new year, I'll be, I'll be prepping to direct for, for Winchester. So that's something I really, really want to do. Um, Spate was just there. He was just directing. And, uh, and I was mad. <laughs> He's a little upset that he did one before me, but uh, it's all right. It's all right. Being busy is good. Yeah. What's this? Do I need to sit down? <laughs> he was with me last night. He's like, I'm going to give this guy a chair. I'm not sure the coffee's going to keep him on his feet. Thanks, guys. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who wants to join me on stage? I'm kidding. Um, uh, yes. Hi. Hi. Um, so I asked this question six years ago at Nerd HQ, um, and I asked... Uh, Nerd HQ was a, a panel in uh, San Diego during the San Diego Comic-Con. Those are good panels. Those are good panels. They're fun. Yeah, I miss those. <laughs> and I asked you... From uh, the start of Supernatural to now, um, if you had anything that you could add to your resume. So, COVID, it's been years. Is there any special talents or anything that you think is funny that you could add to your resume? Like special skills? <laughs> yeah, I guess I could add tap dancing. Did you ever expect to be able to add that, but I guess I can now. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say one that I'm kind of proud of, and I, I'm only saying this because I've been told I can say this, not because I, I'm like, yeah. Uh, fight coordinator, fight choreographer. Um, and that, that literally came from uh, John Koyama, who's a stunt coordinator of the boys. We had those, uh, for those who have seen the boys, there are some, there are some substantial fight sequences and action sequences in that. And when, because it's such a big show and has the budget, we got to rehearse those for like weeks in advance, which you never get on Supernatural or even Big Sky. Network television is a little different than streamer. Um, so we got to get in there and like, work out the movements and like figure out how we, you know, okay, we're gonna do a punch here, then he's gonna grab, you know, grab me and throw into the wall and stuff. And I just, I just made suggestions because I've, I've done punchy, punchy scenes a few times. <laughs> uh, and I enjoy them. 
And so after like we did, there was a big one in, in episode six, and then, there, and then we had a big one in episode eight. And, and, uh, and Koyama is, uh, he's a, a like highly decorated stunt coordinator and one of the best I've ever worked with. Um, he was like, dude, I feel like I need to give you fight choreographer credit on this show. Um, and that was one of the biggest compliments I had. And it was just like, okay, let me see that again. All right. And my stunt doubles, like, they show us what they worked out. And I was like, okay, what if I, what if I, like, did this and then I rolled in and it was like a bow and then an elbow. And he's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I love that. Do that. <laughs> So it was very, uh, and I love that. That's one of the one of the great things about doing what I what I get to do is is um, collaborating and creating with just insanely talented people. Um, I love that. Not just fighting, but like even doing a scene. You know, Jared and I would sit down. It was like we'd always find these little moments that weren't the script, and that just it's awesome. I love that. So yeah, I'll, I'll take fight. Choreographer. <laughs> Throw that on the special skills list. Yeah, all the way back in the red. <clears throat> My brain just left. Um, thank you for the Winchesters. I love the episodes coming up. I can't thank you. I, I don't feel like that would have ever been an idea people would have taken a gamble on if it didn't have an audience that was following the mothership so uh, so lovingly as you guys. So thank you for thank you for creating a bit of a safety net for me. <laughs> Even though there might be some holes in it. I know who you are. I trust you completely with that. Um, also thank you for letting me hug your security guy yesterday. I wanted to tell him he has amazing hugs, but I was in your presence and my brain turned to mush. Well he's he's right there he is. The man gives good hugs. Cliff is very jealous right now wherever he is. I was going to say you can tell him how much how great his hugs are, because maybe he would appreciate it coming from you. <laughs> Your hugs are amazing. <laughs> okay, my question. So, okay. I used to um, teach scuba diving in Australia on the Great Barrier Reef, and then Hawaii, and I have a lot of stories because there are sharks. So I'm wondering if you have ever done an extreme sport, and if you could have a story about that. And if you don't, I'm also a middle school teacher, and I know your kids are all in school now, so maybe you have a story that you can share with us about that. Two options. Oh, <laughs> options. So many options. Um, I'll try to answer both quickly. How about that? Uh, and since you brought up uh, scuba diving and diving with sharks, I too have, uh, have been in the water with, with some sharks. Um, and it's a little unnerving. Not a big, I haven't been in the water with a great white. Although, there was a time when I thought I wanted to, and I think that time has passed. <laughs> uh, but that is, uh, it, it is a wild feeling to be in somebody else's territory and know that you are completely helpless. And if they wanted to do something to you, then that's, there's nothing you can do about it. It was, um, there was, I think it was a nine foot, I forget exactly, it was a reef shark, that's what it was. Uh, it was a big, there were just some black tips and there was a whole bunch of them, but they weren't interested in me. They were, you know, doing their thing. I had my knife. You had your knife? <laughs> what do you do with that? <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, when they're, when they're eating your leg. Stop it. <laughs> oh, there goes my leg. But I got my knife. Um, it, I will say though, it is, that is a, a, a bizarre and, and out of body kind of feeling uh, to, to, to dive with predators like that. Um, so that, yeah, I have done that and it's crazy. Uh, and then as far as uh, school kids, just had parent-teacher conferences last, uh, last week. Uh, you said you're a teacher? Oh, God bless you. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I could barely put up with my three, and to have an entire class of kids that aren't even mine, I'd be like, there's the door. <laughs> I'm not doing this. 
Um, but I will say that we uh, we got some glowing reports from from the teachers about our kids. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, I'm very very proud of, of, of them. The, the twins are in kindergarten right now. Zeppelin, the teacher was like, he is the sweetest boy on the planet. I'm like, I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> and then uh, in the arrow, um, apparently she's setting the bar for the like. They're like, oh, you know, they, they, they do these tests of like, you know, they're. Uh, to, to see what the level of their learning is. Aptitude tests? Aptitude tests, correct. Um, <laughs> and I forget there was, I, I forget exactly what it was, but like, well, we, you know, we at the school here, we, the benchmark is uh, five. We want them to be at around a five, a, a, a three to five is, is nice. Anything over the five is great. She's 22. <laughs> and they were like, we could talk about skipping a grade for her, oh. but she has a twin brother. So we're like, yeah, no, no, no. But she might need some, some special attention because she's like getting bored. But she loves going to school and she's a sponge. So I'm, I'm scared about her. <laughs> she's she's going to be the death of me for sure. Um, anyway, thank you. Uh, right here in the front, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, Vincent. So I know there was a lot of pranks, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is there a question that you would be happy to never answer again? A question I'd be happy never to answer again? Yeah, like you're sick of being asked. Hmm. Um, I don't know that I'm like sick of it, but. I'll just say that this one's like, every time I get this one, I'm like, ugh. And not in a bad way, because it's just hard to answer. And that's, what's your favorite episode? Because it's like 327 episodes to choose from. It's like, they're all my babies. You know? Some less than others. Um, but it's, just, it's tough. And every time I get that question, I probably have given a different answer every time. Uh, so, I don't know. That, that's one that I can take off the top of my head. Yeah, thanks. Uh, all right, let's go over here. Yes, sir, all the way in the, yep, green, yep. <laughs> so I had a, I had a question. Uh, when you first met Death in the pizzeria, uh, was there any special preparation you did before the scene? Because the, the tenseness, or was Julian just enough as soon as you walked into the door? Of just being absolutely Julie was enough. <laughs> uh, for real. I didn't I had all the plans that I had going into that scene went out the window as soon as I sat down in front of him. I was like, what the <laughs> uh, I, was, I just I, I was uh, there there are several quite a few moments in throughout Supernatural um, where if you look closely enough, you can see Dean disappear and Jensen appear as an audience member. And just going like... <laughs> kind of like at the Metallica concert. <laughs> That's how I felt when I sat down across from Julian. He's just... He's so... Like his performance and just his, his whole persona is just so layered and, and rich. And uh, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have to do anything. I just had to like try to try to lob him back to him. Um, he's, he's fantastic. He's fantastic. One of our best guest stars, I think, we ever had, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, let's go right down the aisle here, yeah. Hey. Hey. So my first con ever, and I'm a nervous wreck, so I'm gonna try to keep it together. This is your first con? First con ever. How many else, have first timers? Really? I'm going to say this, and you've probably heard me say it before, but literally we've been around for almost 20 years. <laughs> Is this your first, did you find the show during COVID or something? I'm only 17. You're only 17? Stop talking. Uh, you literally were born when the show started. I was a few weeks old. You were a few weeks old? When did you start watching it? Season 12. Season 12. I had to binge it in two months. You binged the whole thing in two months? Quality. <laughs> You what? I'm from Brazil, you've never been there. 
I've been to Brazil. I was just there and uh... Yeah, but then I was here. Oh, you were... oh I wasn't there with you. Oh. 15 years ago. 15 years ago? I don't know what I was doing 15 years ago. Yeah, I do. I was doing Supernatural right here in this city. Ah, uh, beautiful British Columbia. There's a reason they call it Supernatural British Columbia. Yeah. People think that's just an ad that the uh, tourism board came up with. No, it's because we shot here for 15 years. Um, so, go ahead. Alright, so, uh, it feels like this day and age especially, it's, uh, kind of hard to find important that everybody has an opinion on everything and you can't just be a, a bystander and it's kind of geared towards everybody has a platform yeah <laughs> yep. I mean, it, there's good and bad to it and it gets kind of overwhelming even just for day-to-day -day life to feel like i don't know living intentionally or living genuinely mm -hmm. and especially you working in an industry where media plays a huge part of your your job um, promoting your work, all that. What are some ways that you, um, or some tools and things that you use in your life to keep yourself living so genuinely and intentionally instead of just going with the flow or following the stream or kind of taking opinions just because it's the popular opinion at the time? I mean, I think we all struggle with that, but especially in your case where you work in media, how do you kind of check yourself or find tools to like live genuinely and intentionally? Great question. Um, I'll start by saying that, uh, you know, I'm not kidding. We all have a platform, right? Some are larger than others, but everybody has uh, a space to um, express themselves. Uh, certainly with social media um, has given that to, to everybody. Um, it is up to the individual to respect it. If you don't respect the platform and what it can do, because it can be damaging, and it can also be uplifting, and it's up to the individual to choose what, what they're gonna use that platform for. Uh, I am very precious with the fact that I get to stand on the stage and address you all. Um, I don't take that for granted, and I wanna earn it. I don't deserve this but I'm gonna to try to earn it every time I get on stage and every time I get in front of a mic or every time I post a thing on internet. Um, <laughs> I almost said the interwebs. <laughs> on purpose. Uh, it is a responsibility that uh, a lot of people didn't used to have. Um, and now we all have it. And it's up to us to decide what we're gonna do with that. Do we want to bring light to the world, or do we want to cast shadows? I choose to bring as much light as I possibly can, and I will continue to do that. Um, now, touching on what you said, living genuinely and not, you know, not just being a, a mouthpiece for the popular idea. Um, I try to, I try to navigate that. I'm not, not always great, but I try to navigate that as the best to my ability that I feel like doesn't. Um, doesn't have negative uh, reaction, a negative outcome. Um, now, if I have a, an opinion about something that's you know wrong, and I want to speak out about that, then I will, because that's that means something to me. But largely, I keep my opinions to myself. Um, you know, we've all been taught that if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. So I try to still live by that. I try to teach my kids that when you do say something, you should make every effort to make it positive. Yes. Hang on, we got a mic coming right here. Keep coming, a couple more, a couple more, right there. Hey. I was wondering, wondering if you have a favorite quote that you've kind of lived by most of your life? A favorite quote that I've lived by? Gosh. Um, I, don't, I don't know that there's one in particular. I, I certainly have some that pop up into my head. I just kind of touched on one, and this is one that I've, uh, that I've told the whole cast of the Winchesters. I said, listen, you don't deserve to be here. You earned the right, but you've got to continue to earn it. You earn it every day. Um, it is a responsibility, 
And so I don't, I just try, I just try not to take things uh, for granted in, in, in the way of like, oh yeah, yeah, of course, this is where I should be, and this is, I, I deserve this. No, I'm gonna continue to earn it. Um, also, I've said this before, some of you have heard me say this, and you're probably gonna laugh, but there was a, there was a Lincoln commercial that Matt McConaughey did. <laughs> And in that commercial, he said a quote that just hit me so much that I actually wrote it down and put it up uh, in, my, in, my, in my closet. And it said, um, taking care of yourself takes care of more than just yourself. And, and of course, to me, that means my kids, my family. So, uh, you know, being good to yourself, um, not just like mentally, but like physically. Like getting exercise, eating the right foods, uh, not being negative, not uh, you know, trying to be a positive impact on the world. That's being good to yourself, but that also is good to the people that depend on you. Um, and I know that I have a big responsibility, not just with myself, not just with my kids and my family, but to all of you, to my friends, to my extended family, to my work, to my coworkers, to my cast. They, they depend on me. And so, I try to be good to myself so that I can be good for them and you. So disrespected this morning, my lord. Uh, all right, how about um, I see? Let's go far back. Glasses. Yeah, as she takes her glasses off. <laughs> stuff that you could do that was just, I mean, it was amazing. And all the other actors have talked about how seeing you fight is amazing. Pretend fight. Or <laughs> the stuff that draws me back is that stuff you just described with Jared talking about doing stuff in a scene. There's this one episode where you're walking down steps after talking to a person in the house, you and Jared, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In lockstep, synchronized, it's like mundane choreography. That's what I, it, but it's, you can't do that. Most people can't do that with someone. Hey, let's go down these steps. Boom, 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 boom. At the exact same, <laughs> in the exact same rhythm and same, yeah. And your shoulders, okay. <laughs> Many times have you watched the scene? <laughs> it's your shoulders are recording and you're speaking dialogue. Uh huh. The only thing you're not doing is eating, <laughs> or but there's not true. Uh, there is there's probably not one scene of Supernatural that Jared and I don't have gum in our mouth. So we were also chewing gum. <laughs> Is this a choreographer, this secret masterful choreographer <laughs> that we don't know about, or is it you? Does this really generate from you, like improv? Like, and you guys? It was. I, I guarantee you, it was. It was done subconsciously, and it is because Jared and I uh, are very similar in the way we do, uh, in the way we perform, um, and we also, you know, when you work together with somebody that that long. You don't, you don't even think about doing stuff like that. And um, I'll give you an example. Uh, whenever they're ready on set, they'll come and they'll knock on, on the trailer doors. Jared and I had two separate trailers right next to each other. And they would knock on his door, or mine, and then they'd go around and knock on the other ones, right? They'd say, hey, we're ready for you. And there's a moment, you know, some people are like, what are they doing, you know? You knocked, are they coming? Like, no, there's about a, there's about a 60 to 120 second space in time where between the time that they knock and say, hey, we're ready for you, to the time that we walk out of the trailer. And in that time, you know, we might have been, might have been sitting there for half an hour, you know, on the phone, you know, doing something, learning a lot, whatever it is. 
but we're not ready to go on set because as soon as we step out of that trailer, we're on. I'm kind of going off, off uh, topic here, but uh, it was unbelievably uh, odd how many times Jared and I literally opened our doors and came out of the trailer at the exact same second. <laughs> Like, people would start betting on it and be like, that's weird, guys. <laughs> um, we just we just got into literally lockstep on just about everything we did because we were together so much, you know? Um, so stuff like that that happens, totally subconscious. Yeah, it just it just happens. And I hope I, I, hope I find that again. Uh, I don't know that I ever will, which means we'll have to just reboot Supernatural. <laughs> The bartender at the hotel bar here played a coroner, season 12, episode 9. The bartender at the hotel here yep. was on Supernatural? Yes, yes, he was. <laughs> Krista, everyone in, in Vancouver has been on Supernatural. My good friend, Angie, I here. She's worked on the show. See? Um, we were at the Cactus Club a few years ago. Guys asked how you all know each other. He was Deputy Douche slash the Sparkly Vampire. I just like the name of this character. Do you ever get to go anywhere and not <laughs> somebody at the restaurant? Or how often are you surprised and you're like, oh, wait, I should have known that guy? Um, I'd say in Vancouver, it's a lot more likely to walk into a restaurant and have the waiter come over and be like, you know, uh, season three, I was, uh, you know. Um, but it's, it, it, I will say, a lot of times I'm, I feel bad because I may not recognize them, but you gotta understand, like, I, I, you know, how many hundreds of people have I gotten to work with uh, on screen? Plus, this might have been something that happened 12 years ago. And I'm like, I don't recognize you, nor would I, had I even remembered who you were. <laughs> I can't remember who I worked with last week. Um, no, I, uh, yeah, there's, the, the, the great thing and also the crazy thing about being on a show for that long in the same city is a large part of the population has come through the supernatural doors. Um, and it, it makes me, it gives me a little pride when I meet somebody like the hotel bartender and like, I worked on that show. Um, to know that what we did for that long employed so many people and gave them an opportunity to have an experience on a show, and I feel like, oh, you, you know, you got to come over to our house and have a party. And that's how I feel like. That's, and, and now I'm getting to go to other people's houses and party in their houses. Although I used this analogy the other day, I was like, yeah, it's, they're like, how's it being on Big Sky? I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like being at somebody else's dinner party. Um, I feel like Jared and I were the hosts of our own for a long, long time, and now it's, uh, now I get to be the, the, you know, the guest of honor somewhere else. Although at the Big Sky, I feel like I've showed up and they're like, hey, this is great, what's for dinner? They're like, actually, we're gonna need you to cook the steaks. <laughs> All right, I got this. Um, so yeah, I, it's, I love it. It's, again, it's a little, a little bit of pride in me to know that we've, we've, we've touched that many people and that many people have been affected by the show or been employed by the show to some degree. It's pretty cool, yeah. How are we looking? No, get out of here. <sighs> All right. All right, real quick. Yes, just yell it out. Radio company, what's the story there? Radio company, ah, oh, glad you asked, finally. That was a plant, I, I, I waited till the end, thank you. I'll pay you later. Uh, yeah, real quick, uh, the uh, um, information on ticket sales and stuff will go on uh, online tomorrow. Uh, I'll, I believe the ticket sales are actually gonna be available Friday. Um, right now, it's just the one event in Nashville. Um, it'll be the Monday after uh, after the con in Nashville, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, you know, it'll be a little a little Christmas themed first ever radio company concert. So uh, I hope to see as many of you there as possible. That'll be fun. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you later.